Another common obfuscation technique, base 64. However, it's also used in legitimate stuff. It is used when you pass a or attach a file to an email. That file is base 64 encoded and sent over the wire as base 64 um, text, basically. Um, that is the, the old protocol, um, the, the RFC recommends doing that. Um, nowadays, it's not necessarily needed because SMTP is transferred over TCP, which can actually handle binary values. Um, but most things, uh, most clients will still transfer uh, attached files as basic people encoded first. And then when your client like Outlook or Thunderbird or whatever you, you use, Gmail, gets that file, what it does is it knows, oh, this is basic people encoded, and it um, decodes it and provides it to you. Uh, so what attackers will do is um, they want an easy way of obfuscating the strings in their malware. Base 64, encode them. And then they can base 64 decode them. Um, or same over the network, um, especially the stuff that's using their in HTTP-like protocol, where, so that it blends in. You'll see some, uh, if you take a look at some of the the arguments and the URLs to banking websites or what have you, um, to, to, to Google even some of the, the parameters they pass in their URLs, the values are base 64 encoded so that they can be passed as ASCII strings rather than um, unprintable um, binary bytes. So base 64 encoding is used, the attackers use it so that it'll, it'll blend in as well as to make it more difficult for analysis. Um, the, ooh, that cut off. The alphabet, the standard alphabet, oh my, there we go. Standard alphabet is that, um, and by alphabet I mean for every three bytes, it breaks it down into four six bit long. Um, values and um, so it takes the first three bytes. Let me let me do this. So if we have the first, um, yeah, we'll do this. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just numbering the bits like that. We have three bytes. What base 64 encoding does is it takes the first six of the first one, three, four, five, six, and it uses that as a um, interprets them as a you know as a bit field and interprets it as a number and uses that as an index into this alphabet. And then it takes the next seven, eight, one, two, three, four, the next six bits, <coughs> interprets, interprets it as a number, and uses that as an index into here. And by doing that, what you end up getting is, um, you know, like this is. If, if the first byte is zero, the second byte is zero, the third byte is zero, what you're going to end up getting is, well, these are all zeros, so you'll have six. So what you'll have is, since these are all zeros, then these are all P zeros, and the zero index into this is A. So three null bytes ends up being encoded into a a a a four a's. And that is the base sixty four encoding of three null bytes. Excuse me. 
Um, and that, that's, that's the basics of it. If this were, um, now let's change that to one, zero, zero. So this is, this is the binary. So that would be, what's that? One, two, four, four, zero, zero. And those are your bytes. What you're gonna, going to end up having is this first, it doesn't help if I point at my screen. This first block of six bits is going to be equivalent to one. And so this load is going to be D. And then the next six bits is all zeros. Oh, the next set is all zeros, and those will be eights. So like that. That's, that's your basic, basic C point. You have a question, Zena? I don't know where I heard this, but I think it was maybe Shroomcom recently. Have you run up across um, custom alphabets that much? Right. So that's. Zeno asked, do we run across custom alphabets? Well, um, in. We'll get there, but um, one of these questions, or one of these things, yes. <laughs> and and what what we're going to see shortly is an example of a custom alphabet. I asked my question wrong. I was actually meant to ask more about a prevalence question. So how often do you see custom alphabets as opposed to regular alphabets? Often enough. <laughs> um, I would not say that it is rare. How about that? Um, it's 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 something it's something worth it. Usually, so when I see a custom alphabet, or when I go looking for a custom alphabet, it's because I see a string in either the command and control protocol because uh, I'm looking at packets a lot of times, or I see a string in the, the binary that this looks like it's base64. Copy the string. Base64 decode, and I get gibberish, and it makes no sense to me. Then I'll go, huh, I wonder if there's a custom alphabet in there, um, and I go looking for that. Um, or if I see the, the Base64 stuff, and I don't see the standard alphabet in the strings, I'll go, huh, I wonder if there's a custom one, and I'll look for that. We'll, we'll get into that. It's, it's in the examples how we go about doing that. But yes, I, I do see custom alphabets where they take your standard one and they change around, you know, maybe put, you know, the lowercase c um, where the D should be and then everything else gets, gets incremented up or, you know, call them simple. They just transpose. So let's take a look at, at, an, at an example. Um, just watch me do this first and then have you go through. Um, so we're going to use APT1, malware families, Clover 065. Okay. Let me go to my VM. Minimize that. I'll close that and sure save. Um, let me let me clean this up a little bit because otherwise it's going to get um, going to get crowded here. So if I go array of malware, labs, APT1 malware families. So is it the main collision or the main report? <laughs> um, intentionally, these are APT1 malware families. What the contagio dump.blogspot.com, awesome resource. If you're not aware of it, what the author there does is she collects malware and gets malware sent to her and she posts it online and posts analysis and posts links to analysis. So it's actually a really good resource. One of the things that she did is she took Mandiant's reports on APT, what they're calling APT1, and she said, huh, I wonder if I already have these samples or if I don't, if I can get these. And she packaged them all up into three different zips, which we have here. And we're going to be analyzing um, this malware that Mandiant reported on. So you can see what what malware that obviously some people are interested in looks like. But just watch me for now. Uh, I'm going to copy that 
there. There's a lot of it. All right. So, which one was it? Was it C or was it G? Web C2. Which one? Somebody looking at the wiki, tell me. Clover says? Clover. Clover and the 065. All right. Copy that over here. And we'll, I'll just I'll minimize that for now. So if we take a look at this, and I'll make sure that I do this right. If we open it up in IDA, and then we take a look and say we saw this doing some web C2, web command and control, and we saw some strings that look like basically foreign encoded. Well, that would be a reason to maybe look for the alphabet in there. So that's what I'm going to do. Build this up. I, uh, yeah. Does its analysis thing. Gives me pretty graph. All right. So I'm going to do is Alt V to do a binary search, and I'm going to put in quotes capital A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O. Yeah, that's good. Close quotes. Find all occurrences is checked. Say OK. And there we go. I go to that address that I came up with. And I see A, B, C, D, F, 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 Z, A, B, C, D, lowercase, zero, plus, slash. There's our base 64 alphabet. So something that we can do here is I can say, well, I know this is a, a string. And it is null terminated. So if I go to the beginning of this, put my cursor there, and I press A for ASCII string, it goes, OK, I'm going to name this location. And I'm going to go to the first null that I see and just group it all together and show it to you. Makes it a little easier to see. So it's kind of nice. And I can name that. That's a base64 alphabet. Now if I see this reference anywhere in the code, I'll, I'll notice it. Um, is there a standard Windows library that programs will call that does the base64? Um, I think so. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, there, there's got to be it's such a common encoding algorithm. Uh, there has to be a in in API. I don't know off the top of my head what DLL is going to include that. If there is a there might be a a standard C uh, library that you can use or a, a Windows specific. I don't think that it would be Windows specific library. Um, but I mean, if you're using Visual Studio, obviously it'll, it'll be a Visual Studio thing. Um, that's that's definitely something for the Google, for the Googles, but uh, I won't I won't look into that there. Um, what we end up seeing with the with it either being um, it's either being called and compiled in statically, or they have their own libraries for doing this. I, I see it enough where the actual standard library is being used, um, or they're using some kind of custom thing that um, expects the person who's compiling it to say, OK, I'm going to use this, this custom alphabet, but the person who's compiling it or configures it doesn't actually do a custom one. It's, it's just the standard. I, I see it enough where it's actually embedded that, uh, that, um, that I don't actually see the, or rather I should say, I don't see the calls to a specific API function, um, I see it being embedded like this. So, so there we go. We have that. That was easy. Um, another way we can do this, yeah, PID, is to use the PEID 
Crypto Analyzer plugin, Web PID. If I do a drag and drop, identifies, hey, I think this was compiled with Visual Studio 6.0. Go to the plugins, Ooh. Crypto Analyzer, and it goes, hey, look, I found a base64 table. At 40D024. And if we take a look at Ida, at close anchor our location, 40D024. So PEID crypto analyzer plugin will identify this as well. And that's actually a really nice quick way to uh, to see, you know, is there a cust uh, standard base64 alphabet in there? Another way to find this, let me see if I can work with the same one. Yeah. So what what you're going to do is duplicate what I just did to make sure that that you understand how to find it, both in terms of in IDA as well as using PEID, um, and then do the same thing for this other sample. And you're going to grab the uh, APT1, oh, that typo, malware families dot zip. And you can unzip the folder in there to your desktop. And I will write the, uh, the password here. Okay, so did the walkthrough of that. Then we wanted to take a look at the WebC2 CSON A38. Let's see, WebC2 CSON A. I'm, I'm going to go over that now. So, what we have in here, if we do a text search for A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, blah, find all, it's going to find, oh hey, look at this. A, B, C, D, and we have that plus slash, but but what what's different here about uh, between this and the previous one? Sets are reversed. Yeah, the sets of capitals, lowercase numbers are moved around. In the standard base sixty four, you have the capitals first and then the lowercase, and then the numbers, and then your slash and your plus. Here, they've been moved around. This is a custom base 64 alphabet. Or if they'll use this, you'll get the same, it'll look like a base 64 encoded string, because it's using the same, same character set. But if you try to decode it using a standard base 64 alphabet, you're going to get the wrong byte order or bit order. There we go. That's what's different there. So another way to find that, say it wasn't using the you know, A, B, C, we did a search for that, that string, capital A, B, C, D, and such. Say it, it moved these around, it, you know, put the, the lowercase in between each of the uppercase letters, you know, for example. How would we go about finding that? Mm -hmm. 
You got a question? Maybe I don't want to decode code my own custom basics for decoder. Is there an existing tool that does that? That's a good question. Not that I'm aware of. Usually I, I just script it with Python personally. Um, if you would like one, I can share what I wrote up. Uh, and I, I can even do it in, in a language of your choosing, assuming it's one I know. So, in scripting, do, do you kind of uh, scripting framework for this? So, so it, it all depends on what it is you're trying to do. Usually, if I see a base, base 64 encoded string, in order to try the standard alphabet, I already have to get that to my, is in my Linux analysis terminal where I run base 64 dash D to decode and I give it the string and it comes back and it gives me, you know, garble de gook. I go, huh, I wonder if there's a, if there's a custom alphabet. I'll then search for the custom alphabet, which I'm about to show how to do that. And if it is there, then I'll take that custom alphabet and I'll bring that over to where my script is, which is the same place where I did the A64-D for the standard alphabet. So, so you'll basically do something like, you'll, you'll get all the string to go, oh, that looks like A64. And at this point, you'll be working on your analysis machine and then run the standard one. And, so, and then make a guess about the alphabet and code it up and Mm -hmm. All right, so let me show you another way of finding that using something called IDA ENT, which apparently did not put on the desktop. If we go to, there we go. So on the, on the desktop, there's the RE of malware. If you go into that, there's a tools folder there. You can just move that onto the desktop because we'll be dragging and dropping stuff onto that. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know if moving is going to break something. No, 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 it won't. It, it's a self-contained thing. So this is, it's called IDA-ENT. ENT stands for entropy. IDA stands for IDA. Or, or the second IDA stands for interactive disassembly. Uh, it is based on a plugin to IDA that will do entropy calculations. But what the author did is they said, this is actually a useful tool outside of IDA. I'm going to make just a, an EXE for it so people can use that outside of IDA. So that's the I grabbed. If you uh, Google for IDA-ENT, you'll find it. All right, so what we're going to do is Shoot, which one of these was it? It was this one. Drag and drop that on there. And first thing is you get this entropy calculator. Well, we got to do some setup first. Um, the chunk size, we got to change to four zero, that's in hex. Entropy, I'm going to set to 5.97. And then you have to choose one of these sections to run on. I'm going to double click on the data section, and that just fills in the, the address and the length. Then you do a deep analyze, and it comes back with, these are the addresses where I reached the entropy threshold over the chunk size. And I see 430F, 4310, 4311, 4312. If we go back into IDA and take a look at where this was, 4310, there's our a64 custom alphabet. And what that, the reason that the entropy search works is because each of these bytes is different from each other. And so you're going to get a high entropy over that range of bytes when you compare them to each other. So, 
I think I'm not sure if I'm with you. So basically, what we're doing is we're searching the binary for some for a string that looks like it has a given entropy, which mm -hmm. would therefore suggest it's your R custom alphabet, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Um, j just that it's it's high. Uh, so the let me get this right. So so because base sixty four characters are based on values that are six bits. Um, what we're going to be looking for is I, I don't want to put six in there because the calculation from my testing at least is a little off. Um, so I put something really close to six because um, you see when we do this and we do the DP analyze it comes back with 5.977280 as the entropy. Um, one thing that I was playing around with, although, so see what this is doing, it's what's 40 hex in decimal? Sixty-four. How many characters long is a base sixty-four alphabet? Give you a hint, it's in the name. So would this entropy search work if I were to take this string and divide it up over cell so uh, um, so if you were to take the string and you put it like part of it down here and part of it up here and the other part in the R data section. Um, no, because what it's looking at is consecutive bytes. So if you're dynamically constructing your string, that's one way. That is a way to get around this particular technique. And actually, in any technique that's looking for um, something that is statically within the file, dynamically creating it. And you'll see another example like that shortly. Okay. What, what's the entropy of sort of ordinary effect, execution code? I don't know. Take a look at the text section. <laughs> or, oh, hey, look at this. Entropy for that section. 6.25. Is this normal? Well, it's malware. I'm not quite sure I'd say it's normal. <laughs> but if you would like to perform a, a, a data gathering and statistical analysis of the binaries on your workstation, feel free to do so, but not during my time. No, that's a, that's, that's a good question because that can lead you to, well, is there a way of saying, just based on entropy of the sections, this looks packed, this doesn't look packed, this looks like malware, this doesn't look like malware. Um, there has been some research into that, although the, the kind of standard response is you can't use that as a great detection technique because it's really easy to get around that. The converse of that being, well, what if it's just good enough to say this is suspicious? There's some uh, tools that will look at that. Um, some of the Mandian stuff. Red Curtain. Yeah, Red Curtain, as well as some of the HB Gary stuff will look at entropy of uh, sections, PE files. So my follow-up question is going to be, have you ever used that and found it to be useful? Because I've looked at it for a little while and just never found it to be good enough to be useful. And not good enough like the tool doesn't work, good enough like it was never enough suspicion like level to... Yeah, there's, at least in my experience, there's enough legit stuff that looks like that, that I, I haven't personally. Uh, I was just going to say, my sample size is one. I put Notepad in there, and it has a 6.2 entropy. Yeah. Um, 
it's I personally don't use it, but that isn't to say it doesn't have usage. Okay. Yeah, sure, save it. So we went over I to end. And that is a custom basic support alphabet. Now I want you guys to give it a try with this file, and that's going to be in the Contagio apt1 zip. So you want to unzip that to your desktop. I'll give you the password here. Okay, so reason I wanted you to do with that sample is to see what can happen when you try to use Ida Ant on a sample that is doing more than just your base 64. It's using things like, if you take a look in PID at the crypto analyzer, it's got a lot of stuff that it's detecting. Some real crypto going on. And what you end up seeing, so SHA-1, Rindall, SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-384, what you get with real crypto are tables of numbers that crypto uses that will have high entropy in those tables, and you end up getting these hits on not just your base 64, if it is using it, but also on some of the crypto tables. Is it safe to say that, just by the looks of this, they imported like everything in the kitchen sink without, you know, worrying about, shall we say, being a little loud about things? Because, I mean, I, I'm just going to take a wild guess that they're not using all these different crypto algorithms that they've got laying around here. Maybe. Like, maybe they just linked, like, those kinds of talent to it, basically. Right? They go back. Back to trash. Maybe. I know, because I told it would be in the DEVs. Damn. Well, or, if we see DEVs. Well, well, here's a question. All these different sizes will be <laughs> Yeah. Is it DES or are, is this just hitting on part of DES? Is it using the full DES algorithm? Is it using a customized version of it? This is fair. I guess the point I'm getting at is like by importing all this, this stuff here, mm -hmm. it's like a well, this isn't so. This isn't just importing. If it's seeing these tables within the uh, within the binary itself, we're talking like statically compiling, right? 